Welcome to another stretch where we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna practice drawing 3D objects. I'm so excited you're here with me. We're going to draw a soda can or a pop can because I'm from Michigan and we call it pop. So go ahead, check it out. We're gonna use those ellipses we've been talking about in the lessons to draw a curved top and to draw a curved bottom. I'm gonna talk about why it's so important to go really light at first when you're kind of carving out the can in space. And then we'll go ahead, we'll talk about starting slowly with light values, start slowly with light values, and then slowly work in shadows. You wanna have a strong light source and you want it to be really, really clear where the light is coming from. So make sure you organize your markers or whatever you're using, light to dark value. Check out the value scale uh, video in the Art Fundamentals playlist if you haven't done so already. Um, we're gonna talk about little lessons we're learning. I firmly believe that it's okay for art to be a little bit messy. Um, and this video is in real time right afterwards. Um, I'll talk about why you shouldn't worry so much about drawing the label, but rather focus on the light. The light grays and the dark grays. So, and then I'll talk about dancing all over when you're kind of introducing the graphics of whatever can it is that you're drawing, or you could draw the can that I'm drawing. But it's really good practice and everyone has um, cans lying around their house that they can use and there's beauty in cans. So we'll talk about all the different grays, light purples, and we'll slowly bring down the values and we'll bring down the shadows and then we'll introduce pen and darker values. And I'll talk about why I made those choices, why I'm splashing in some yellow, because here's the beautiful thing about drawing guys. Drawing is a form of meditation. Drawing is a way to find beauty in the simplest objects. And I want all of my students to go ahead and practice this as many times as possible. Um, you can do this with any sort of 3D object, but a can is just kind of really, really great practice. So we will work in pen. If you have pen, that's a great tool. Um, and then I'll talk about bringing down the background and um, introducing softer grays to kind of soften the soft boundaries as you progress. Notice how I'm kind of dancing and I'm moving all over the page um, as I blend things together and I'm drawing in the edge of the table right there and trying to really introduce the space behind the can as well, as well as the shadows and the textures and really making it look three-dimensional. I'll add hatching to make it look 3D and come out. So thank you. Enjoy, draw. Um, we are drawing today, is it a pop or a soda can? That is the question, is it not? Um, I'm using a 4H right now and I'm starting with ellipses right away. Um, it is a short class in art today, so hopefully we can get a quick sketch in. Um, try to do one sketch a day, one sketch a day. Everyone has a soda can around, no? And I am drawing this can because I'm doing a series with my students about drawing meaningful objects. I have one where I draw this coffee cup. And finding beauty and kind of like the everyday objects that are sort of part of our life. That's what we're thinking about. And I recorded these in advance. So that's why I don't have the can with me. But yeah, okay, let's talk about the drawing. Draw vertical lines and have a curved top and bottom. Your ellipses are gonna help you. And then you do a curved line to help you understand the angle of the text because I'm looking at it from up above. So I got a curved line happening right here. And now I'm doing a curved line for the opening. And notice how helpful it is to have that ellipsis stroke. So again, if you have time, pause your video and warm up and just do from your shoulder some circles. And then I'm doing an ellipsis oval for this opening right here. And I love the idea of drawing a can because you can crinkle, crinkle it and make it even more challenging. And we have them all over the place, a great practice. So now I'm zooming in and I'm just really, really making adjustments with my pencil and really trying to get the angle correct of this because it's coming towards me. So the little opening, what do you call this? The flicker thing? 
gets whiter slowly. So I'm kind of emphasizing that slowly and curving it. I hope everyone's having a good day. And I hope you're drawing with me. And you're being patient with yourself. You know, don't judge yourself. I was talking to a student and they don't think their drawings are good. Don't judge yourself. Okay, just take the time, pause. So I'm making a lot of adjustments and I think right now, yes, I am carving, carving the opening. It's very interesting. You should think about drawing like carving. So you see a little bit of the gray right there. Look at all the different values that you see in the opening of this pop cam. I could do a huge drawing just of the opening of this pop cam. Really, I could add, add like a curve. Now, when you're doing an ellipse, right, you only draw the bottom half of the ellipse and you lift your pencil up because I don't see the back of the oval because it's on the back. So it's like you do a swoop and you go around, a swoop and you go around. And then you curve down, you curve to the side. So now I'm kind of telling the story of this going around. So this is the part that I'm drawing. And remember, line creates shading. If I have curvy hatching bye bye. going down and around, that's gonna help me feel like it's 3D and it's form and it's coming out in space. And I'm really, really emphasizing those hard boundaries at the side. Okay, and now I'm emphasizing the bottom. So notice how valuable having curvy lines is. In this series, we're really trying to make objects look three-dimensional, right? I feel like that's kind of the secret with drawing that isn't talked about enough. It's like, how do you make something like feel like it's coming out on you on the page? And it's the ellipse that makes an object feel like it's coming out at you. It's that curved line and the curved line's coming out at you. And so you want to feel comfortable with doing these curved lines because the shading should go in that direction and jump out of the page. Now I'm really emphasizing the outside. This whole time I'm working with a 4H pencil, which is a hard lead pencil. And I like doing that because I feel like I'm carving and I'm really getting it right. I'm seeing the object right now. And I'm adding now curvy lines to show the story of this pop can going down. Now I'm adding hatching to kind of bring down the value, but notice how right now I'm still, I'm still going pretty light, you know, with my value. Yeah, I'm not getting super dark. I mean, all of my line weight is very, very light because I'm in the stage of finding the object. Now, the beauty of turning your pencil and that quick line going down, quick line going down, right? So you have the curve, like stop, ask yourself, okay, do I have lines going in both directions? This is what we call a contour drawing. You know, we're drawing not just the outline of the object. But I tell my students we're drawing the inside of the object too. Like you want to tell the story of the inside. I, I, there's this famous book, Alberto, no wait, what? The Natural Way to Draw. Oh, I can't remember the author. Great book, check it out. And it's all about how we like draw the inside. Okay. So I think that's the 26 beige marker. I'm trying to see. But it's kind of like a really light gray or it's a warm gray. Notice how the markers are dying. I got a call about that. How quickly these markers are running out. Not happy. Or maybe it's because I've been drawing a lot. Maybe that's why, but we'll see. So I am slowly bringing down the value of the background and like this is something we're finding on in, with the work that students are turning in. They grab that dark marker so quickly. The darkest value that they possibly can. No, no, no. Go light first. Because you're just, like when you start drawing, you're just finding your way. And I, I feel like I'm kind of like painting here. It's awesome. So slowly painting. Doing cross hatching the other way. And, you know, I wouldn't throw out your dead markers. They could be used to kind of slowly bring down the value. And then when you get sick of them, yeah, throw them out. Okay, so all of a sudden, 
something about bringing down the background of a object all of a sudden and I feel like the object's coming out at me in space. I don't know if you guys can relate or if you feel that way, but now I see the pop can. So it's about bringing down the background. Now I'm, I have my 21 and my 94 and the pop can is actually sitting on a brown table. So I'm going to slowly tell that story. Now look, that is it 94? That 94 is a really dark brown. So you want to reserve your darker values for shadows, right? Because we are working on making things look 3D and one of those keys is light. Okay, so I call it in my classes like the fight with light. You're slowly bringing it down and you want a consistent light source. So you have to ask yourself, where is that light coming from? And you can hear my kids in the back. La, la, la. And we are bringing down the value. So I'm kind of painting in that shadow. So the light is coming in from the back left. And I'm bringing down that value. It's coming out. If everyone has a water or a coffee, you need your snacks while you're drawing. And drawing takes time, you know? and. You have to stop, but you have to look. So these videos are recorded in real time because I want my students to get a sense of how how much practice um, it takes. You know, how long, how much time you need to spend. Okay, bringing down the value of the outside. Okay, I love this light purple color. And I follow too a lot of watercolor sketching and I'm starting to use it in my portraits more. And I just love using it everywhere for these shadows. And it doesn't, they, it might not necessarily be my final, but it kind of really, really is telling a story of what it is that I'm drawing. And I am looking for the original picture of the can so I could talk about that. So yeah. I mean, I could see that what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to capture like this light that I'm seeing on the, on the table, like this beautiful light that's coming out. Okay, quick line down with my gray marker. Love these light gray markers because you could slowly bring stuff down. And I mean, look at all of the different colors in a can. I guess you don't see as many here. But looking at the photograph, right? So many different grays in there. So stop and ask yourself, is my space well lit, right? Cause when we're talking about like finding beauty in 3D objects, you need light. So I see, you know, I see students drawing in these dark spaces. It's like, well, try to open up the blinds or, you know, find a desk light, something, but you need light to help you to see the colors. All right, so I'm working on the text. Do not stress out about the text. That is not essential to the story. So do a curved line for where the text is, because like I was saying, the, the text is at a curve, right? So that's your guide. So the text is gonna be at the angle of the ellipses. So whatever can you're drawing, you know, Coca-Cola, whatever. Sprite, I can't think of the names. Just do a guiding line for the text and just carve it in lightly, but don't stress about it. And you see there's a little bit of text up at the top. But I'm just kind of guiding it in. I, I see students, they stress about the words, like drawing the words. And it's kind of like, oh, don't worry about that. Okay, then I'm sketching in the word lime. And I'm not even making a line. You know, I just, I want my viewer to like see, oh, that's the words. But I don't want them to like think about it. I want them to celebrate the entire object. So I kind of like have the text in there. I have one shadow coming down that I'm seeing. And then I'm going back in with my um, 4-H. And it looks like I'm trying to draw those little green blobs at the side of the can. 
right? And I tell my students, like, just make sure you're moving around the page. And I like move around, move around, move around. Don't get stuck in one spot. So I'm going all over the place, adding these green blobs, but I'm not obsessing. So you see folks who are trying to like get to know drawing and they just obsess over something looking right. It's just kind of like move around and I'm taking away. It's like, and that's what's beautiful about shading the background is you're kind of like cutting, it's like you're sculpting and you're cutting out that outline for the outline drawing, right? And then you go in and then you spend more time on the essential part, the inside, because you want that to come out. Okay, so vertical lines too. Love drawing like things that are shaped cylinders because it teach us about, teaches us about the value of going in different line directions. So, and I'm doing CG2, whatever color you have. This is a very light gray. So, you know, take the time to test it to the side. And it looks like we got a blurry camera. I was so into it. I didn't realize that it was blurry. But my students are like, oh my God, I didn't realize that the value was darkness. And it's like, okay, well, you could test it at the side, like test the colors at the side. There we go. Notice the line strokes. They're big, they're bold, they're confident, right? And going curving around. <clears throat> and I love making these videos because I haven't drawn with markers very much in my life. You know, I'm an art drama teacher. I try to be a Renaissance woman, guys. I try to do like a lot of different things. Um, I try to get good at different things and I majored in art, but I didn't have mark. I didn't like practice drawing like this, but I grew up with these markers because my dad's a car designer and so they're in the house and I would see him draw cars with these markers. And it was so amazing, but I haven't practiced extensively. So it's very fun to practice with my students with these, especially in isolation. Okay. So I'm showing you the greens. I have like different values of greens and that neon green starting with that. Now you could draw my can totally. Like you could just copy what it is that I'm drawing. That's fine. You could do that. Or you could draw your own can. It's kind of like up to you, but I'm putting in splashes of color. Yes. I'm not doing solid blocks of color because that neon green is bright. So as you're picking your different colors, they are bright. <clears throat> and then students always stop and write down lessons that you're learning because the sketchbook is a place for you to learn how to draw. Good art can be messy. Good, good art can be messy. I don't know, like, I don't know. Can you like say it in a simple way? <clears throat> I believe that a lot of people don't. <laughs> and I just kind of feel like, I, I don't know, if you embrace the mess, right? If you're open with embracing the mess, then you're less afraid. You're, you're less afraid of the page. And that's kind of like where, where we need to go, I think, because... What I've learned is that people don't draw because they're afraid of messing up. So if you're like, okay, drawings can be messy. If you embrace that, look, I'm carving in the text. Love it. Then it's like, oh, then I can't mess up. Now, yeah, you want to go in and you want to clean it up by making the boundaries, making sure the boundaries are smooth. That's kind of what I'm doing right now with that V. I'm going in and I'm cleaning up the edges. I'm smoothing things out. Okay, and now I'm adding in that, I think that's CG2 again. I'm going in with grays and I'm painting. I mean, and that, I was watching a YouTube video of someone doing um, any, a marker drawing and he was calling it an underpainting. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so interesting. Okay, now I'm really smoothing stuff out, making it long. So it's like all about layers. Drawing is about layering. 
And what you do at the beginning is you start with really light layers and you embrace the mess that is drawing. Okay, now here's, this is where it gets exciting. So, whoa, that's a dark value. Did you see? I saw how dark it was and I was like, whoa! And I stopped. I was like, that's too dark. So slowly, slowly embrace the mess with drawing. Dark. Hey everyone, this is my son What's Jacob. Too dark? Well, I was I used a dark value down at the corner. Now I'm dancing all over with the green. I was like, that's too dark. Because you want to start off drawing really light. Right? Say hi. Hi. Say hi to the students. So I'm writing down lessons in the corner. So do you agree, Jacob, that good art can be messy? Why do you agree with that? Don't get lost in the that detail. Looks good one. It does? Why is that? I feel like you need to not hold back when you draw, right? You need to put in all of the details. It's kind of like, so what I'm doing is I'm painting all the shadows. Can you see the shadows? And I'm getting those shadows into the drawing, putting them in, adding hatching. Hatching, 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 darkening things up, going left, going right. And adding in that purple value, bringing down the purple, and then just really just curving things. Okay, I'm kind of like adding in hatches like down, right? But there I am with that beautiful purple color. I, I, I love it. I, I, can you see the purple in the can? Or am I just putting it there? I mean, you can take creative liberty, but when I add like that blue purple, I mean, that's me celebrating the beauty. I see it a little on the top of the can, but you can take creative liberty and you can add some fun colors, guys. My advice is to start light, like with those light colors, those light values, you know? And now we're slowly adding in the dark values. So I'm going in, Notice how the pen is, uh, I'm using the thinner one and I'm coloring right now. I'm coloring the inside part of the can, right? And I'm really smoothing those boundaries, okay? So my students are like, what is she talking about? Hard boundary, soft boundary. Oh my gosh, my finger's stuck. Is it a pulp or a soja con? Look, I'm smoothing the edges right here because this is a strong transition. So I'm gonna make sure that there's contrast here. So there's a light value and that, then a dark that value. I cut my hand once, a sharp inside. Yeah, it's care you be careful. Be careful with these, everyone. And then dark value alert, shadow underneath. Now I don't see so much of a dark value right here. I guess I do. But in that can in that in the photograph I do. Okay, so I'm painting in, I'm adding in layers. I see a lot of shadow underneath here. So the light's coming in and the lip of this can is casting the shadow on top. Okay, adding some green, going down and doing the ellipses with the green. So you see that green ring? Jacob, do you see that green ring around the side? Yeah. Right there of the can? Yeah. So it's like, do the ellipse. And then I'm getting that green thing. I'm not going to stress about the text, but I'm going to smooth that out. That is a hard boundary. And then I'm going to add in some hatching. And you want to make your drawing fun. So yes, the blobs are shaped weird, but I'm doing curvy hatching. Why? Because I'm trying to show that the can is curving. It's coming out. And everything's going at that downward oval direction, that downward oval direction. So that's something to think about. Okay, I'm switching things up, adding in other values, slowly telling the story. So I, I don't need to do an outline of this. What I need to do is I need to draw the shadows that are under it, and then it's gonna come, it's gonna become more apparent. Jacob, can you bring me a water? Okay, I'm going in cleaning things with my eraser. Eraser cleanup. I tell my students you can draw with your eraser. Curving things, curving around, around, around. And that's a bright green. So I am not lingering in one spot. 
right? And remember, the text is an essential. It's that it's 3D. So you could go different line directions with your markers, right? So I'm curving all around, I'm dancing all around. And I'm carving, I'm telling the story. Notice how you can turn, quickly turn the marker to the side and get a thinner stroke, right? So you could go fat and then you could go thin. And I'm kind of doing stipples, right? And I'm doing dots, right? So shading techniques, that doesn't just happen with pencil. It's a misconception. You shade with markers, right? And the key to shading, I would say, is thinking about color in lights versus darks. Okay, so it's like, when am I using my dark value? When am I using my light value? And you have to look at an object and ask yourself, is that a light green or is that a dark green? Is that a light gray? What? How light is that gray? And then you have to make a choice. And it's easier if you start light. Go light. Okay, so that is starting to look like the can. This is the best part of the drawing. When it starts to look, and now I'm coming in with my darker value, okay? And this is, this is so, I think drawing a can is just the greatest exercise because most cans are kind of light in value and it really forces you to darken the background. And all of a sudden, that brown is making a hard boundary along the side. Now notice how I'm switching up the background color. The background color doesn't need to be all one color. And I'm taking creative liberty, right? I, I wanna show how bright the space is. And so I'm adding in that yellow, but I'm layering in splashes of that light, that beautiful yellow all over. So when you introduce a color, don't just put it in one spot. <laughs> dance all over the page. You know, you want to kind of like go all over the page to introduce unity. Okay, bring you get some dark brown. Because I got that dark um, windowsill behind there. Like that's dark. And that's a hard boundary right there. Curvy, hard boundary, right? And it's that smooth edge. So my students are like coloring the background and they're doing it like... And I'm like, no, like smooth out your edges. That's what I mean. It should be a crisp edge. Right? So you have to know when your edges need to be crisp and when you can be messy with your lines. And it's the outline of the object. The outline of the object where I say you need to be the smoothest. Coming in, adding some hatching. Quick side to side lines here. Like, zoom, zoom, zoom. Why? Because that table is big and long and expansive and you want the viewer to feel the object and feel the story of the object. Okay, jumping to 31 there. Love it. Coloring in. Fabulous doing fast lines. And that's how my dad would draw his cars. I wish I had videos of him drawing his cars, but it would be like, zoom, 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 these fast, crazy fast lines, right? So like, you know, pause your video and just try to do fast lines with your markers. I I'm telling you, like give yourself a break. And like students, like that's all hatching. Like I'm hatching with the markers. Okay, look, I got yellow on the top the side and the bottom, and then put a splash of it inside. Splash the yellow on the inside too. That repetition of bright, intense color creates unity, makes everything kind of like come together and feel very cohesive. And I see some, that is a beautiful can of pulp, a soda, a sparkling water. And I see some of it in the yellow. Okay, curving things up. Okay, that is like a dark blue purple. And it is great for putting in a hard boundary. So why am I taking my time? 
because it's important. Like it's that hard boundary and you save your dark values till the end. And now I'm defining relationships. I'm defining edges. Defining relationships, defining edges, really putting in details. So critical, so important. And I am bringing, I think, is that the same color? No, I put it down. But I'm, I, okay, I'm like, okay, I put all this dark value at the top. So I need to create visual balance. I need to put it at the bottom too. So you got to make sure that you have mostly light value and then you're slowly introducing dark value. So now I'm layering on top. Now I'm putting in that dark shadow near the end. And that's very heavy. That is heavy visual weight right there. And I'm layering it on top of the brown. So you can be like, oh my gold toy, I can have a dark brown. Well, you can layer your colors on top of each other. You can layer things in your art kit on top of each other to make the color that you want. Okay, bringing in dark brown. Really far down. Swooping in. Love it. Love what's happening. And I think this is, I don't know about you guys, but this can is so beautiful to me. So why this, why this can? I've been drinking so many of these during the pandemic. I don't know if you guys have the stock for these cans have been going up. Okay, dark value, introducing dark value at the edge. So I'm putting in a hard boundary right there at the edge of the lip. And now I'm smoothing things. So I have a middle gray, right? I put, so it's helpful to put in the dark gray and have your light gray and then blend things with the middle gray, right? So. You want to have all like different kinds of grays next to each other. So make sure you have all your different grays and order them. That would be a good warm up to do before this. Just ordering the different grays. Because you want to have them ready. You want to have them out. So take the time when you're picking those different markers. Okay. I must be near the end. My students. Please don't lose the pens that you got during supply distribution. Try to save them for drawing because they really do come in handy. Every year when we get the students pens, they end up using them to write and do their fire rates. But try to save them for your drawing. Okay, I'm adding in curvy lines. I'm bringing in those ellipses. Now, why am I not outlining the whole thing? Because the black is powerful. So I just danced around the edge and look, I stopped. I was like, okay, that's too much. I'm going to take a break from the black. I'm not ready because I saw more dark. So I'm going in. That is an interesting choice. I'm going in with that dark blue. Now I am looking at the can, the photo of the can. I don't see that in there, but maybe I saw it at the time. But you have to bring in those darker values because you're trying to tell the story of the shadow. So what's happening right now? I'm going in with a lot of middle grays. I'm putting a lot of middle grays into the drawing, which I think is, you know, very interesting that I'm curving things out. Curvy, curvy, curvy. Okay, hatching is curvy here, right? So I am hatching with the thin edge of the marker. Right, And it's not like consistent all the way around. What you're doing is you're painting in splashes of shadows. You're asking yourself, where are the shadows in the object? And you're sprouting them in. So you see, I do, there is a dark shadow, a dark light gray that goes from the top and down in that photo. Yep, and then swooping down. So you're layering grays on top of the colors. And, you know, you could practice the stroke that you're going to do and then drop down. That's an interesting strategy, too. So coming in with the warm gray there and continuing to carve out. Don't get stuck in one place for too long. You're kind of like moving all over the place. Coming in with a pen. We're drawing this on a Friday in my class. And I think it's just kind of like a fun Friday activity to go ahead and do. Okay, hatching. So you could do pen on top of the gray shadow to bring down the value a little and then show that the can is curved. Now I'm going back in. 
So notice how I'm dancing back and forth between the gray marker and the pen, slowly bringing things down. Okay, I'm defining the edges of the text, but I don't wanna do it too much because I don't want people to obsess over the text, like I was saying. Okay, curving in the edges of that can. And I'm now I'm outlining. It's not a complete line though, but I'm outlining the edge of the can. So what I'm doing is I'm defining the hard boundaries here. Ooh, and I'm re really bringing down the value more inside of here by adding hatching on top of the dark gray. Notice I haven't used my black marker yet. That stuff's too powerful. That's gonna bring your can down to like Mary Cassatt level. Painters hardly ever use black. But the beautiful thing about a pen is it's black, but it's subtle. So I'm just like outlining the edges. So my viewer can be like, oh, that's a hard boundary. That is the end of the top of the can. And I would call the end of this like a hard boundary and the outline a hard boundary. Okay, so zooming in on purpose, really trying to tell the story of the can bending up. Okay, going all around. Dancing, dancing all around. And adding in more lessons, lines do not need to be complete. So lines do not need to be complete. I drew this on January 14th. Meaning like you could do a line and stop and then pick up and do it. Because if you have a complete line, it may be distracting. It may feel a little natural because light doesn't behave that way. Okay, so I went in, I zoomed in, and I'm adding hatching in all over the place, dancing all over the place. Notice how these lines aren't complete. Now I can hear other artists say, like, don't overwork it. But, you know, I, what's beautiful about, like, digital cameras, guys, is if you're worried about messing up, Take a photo and post your progress to Seesaw. Cause it's all about like posting progress and capturing progress and celebrating the process, right? And then go back and add more, take a break. And then ask yourself, okay, well, what else do I wanna add? Okay, I'm going in with pen because I'm telling the story of this bent can, right? So the can, what I, I love drawing cans, they bend out and then they go down and they go around. So by adding these curvy lines, I'm giving it texture and I'm making it come out more in space. So I'm not gonna shade the background too much. The more shading you add to an object, the farther out it comes in space. So adding in the curved lines, circle, 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 really defining the edge right here. And that's looking really fun, you know? Like, can't you, you you're, you're bringing fun to life, really, by, by drawing like your everyday objects, and just thinking about, think about how many, many beautiful colors we have around us every day and how pretty they look together. And what is drawing? But drawing is you thinking about the beauty or meditating on the beauty. I would argue that drawing is meditating. I really would. Cause it's just you and the object, the color and the page. Okay, whoa, dark shadow alert. That is not black by the way, that is a very dark gray. But what am I doing right now? I'm bringing in contrast. So that's like that dark, dark blue gray. I can't remember the number guys. Uh, BG9. Now um, my students have different kinds of marker sets cause a lot were donated and then so the numbers aren't the same, but you kind of do the best. Okay, that BG9, I'm sorry it's out of focus. I'm just splashing it at the bottom just a little. Okay, I'm not gonna obsess over making it perfect. Do I, ca do I catch that it's out of focus? There I go, I fixed it. I keep moving the camera forward and back and my, it doesn't always know where to focus. That BG9 looks so beautiful on top of the green. I'm just gonna say because it's like a blue green, blue gray on top of green and they're 
analogous colors they're friends. Analogous, is that right? They're BFFs. Okay, so that BG9, I'm giving reference points for the eye and I'm putting little dots kind of all over the place, like here, 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 so the eye moves throughout the page. And I am just slowly introducing it, slowly putting in splashes of dark value, ever so slow. Because you gotta be gentle with like a BG9 or a dark value. And it doesn't need to be that color, guys, any kind of dark gray. But, ye and I'm bringing down the shadows. Wow, bringing those down. You wanna introduce it slowly ever so slowly because it's visually heavy. So I'm getting in some of those dark shadows and I'm really showing by putting that shadow in, I'm really showing that it's coming out at space. And now I'm adding in some more of the green for the blob around the edge. Notice how I'm not obsessing about the little details of the blob. It's like, it's more about color. For me, what is the most important shape? The outline of the can and that I have that it's curved. As far as all the shapes on the label, that's not important. You're telling the story that it's 3D. Putting in more splashes of yellow. Ooh, that looks nice. The yellow versus the white. Love that. It's like eye candy. Okay, writing more lessons. Make sure you're taking notes. You can always like post your lessons to Seesaw too. Find beauty in the simple objects. Isn't that the story? And I think it's this drawing that I did that inspired this whole playlist. And you know, I want my students to slowly move to a still life. Now, if you just draw a pop can, you could put that in the art show. Making that which is simple, beautiful. Discover the world. I mean, yes, right? Do you think about how like people go through life and they don't ever see? Like, do you really see? Am I really seeing this world? It's like, oh, pop can is garbage. Makes the world trashy. You may think that, but what does it? Yes. Cans are, but cans bring us water. They bring us bee water. But yes, recycle, guys. What am I saying? I don't know. I'm saying that you could make art out of garbage. And everything has value. Visual value. That's what I'm saying. Everything could be a painting. Okay. Stop philosophizing. I, I just went ahead and I did hatching on the outside to really show that hard boundary. So make sure you have your pen nearby. Class is starting in 20 minutes, so I'm trying to get this recording ready for my students. We're doing differentiation in my art class where students are working on different projects. So it's nice to have a variety of videos for students to work off of. 79, oh, I love that blue green. So 79, I, I was talking about this in another video the other day. It kind of is the great equalizer, this blue gray. It kind of brings everything together and pulls everything together. Soften with 77 blue purple. Soften. So what do I mean? You're like softening the hard boundaries. You're kind of bringing everything together. You're bringing in some ellipses and it just kind of unifies things and it takes something that's gray and garbage and it makes it, it makes it beautiful. Okay, painting the brown in, love it. Really painting the edges, filling in the outline. Painting in the yellow, the dark gray. Okay, so that is 104. It's like a really light beige brown that you would think you would use on like skin tone. But I see it. I see like browns in the shadows, right? So I see browns, I see grays, I see blues in this can. And that kind of brings things up, makes things warm. It's kind of like, I feel like it's the light of the room that's kind of like reflecting into the can. So again, 
make sure your space is well lit. Make sure your space is well lit. So kind of like bring everything down. Look at this gorgeous. Curving things in. Okay, even, even when I'm putting in splashes of warmth, I'm going to always remember I gotta do that ellipses kind of hatching. Because again, I want it round. I want it coming out in space. So dancing all over the place, adding in dark hatches going down, blue greens going down. And I think I'm gonna call this video Finding Beauty in a Pop Can and you guys are gonna be like, what? But it's like, I'm from Michigan. And I, I am going to forever celebrate being from Michigan. Okay, dark lines going up because that's telling the story. So I am at the end of the drawing and I'm gonna add in pen. What's beautiful about this video is I'm like, well, this is how my, my can looks like. So if you haven't done so, if you're worried about adding pen, stop and take a picture. Stop and take a picture and then post it and then keep going, add more. But add in layers of pen and experiment with adding different sorts of layers of pen. So the pen is curvy, but it's not a complete line. It's not a complete hatch. So stop, look back. My art teacher's always said, that's work, looking back. Okay, I'm going in with a gray and I'm kind of bringing all those colors together in the background. And I'm also at introducing that gray into things. So I'm softening things up right now. Right, so you could layer gray on top of the can to kind of soften things up and bring everything together. Right. Zooming out. So I'm gonna tell all my students, like as we approach the still life project, like don't, don't go super complicated at first. I would do something like this because you'll see in later videos, I try to do um, more complicated objects and it's harder. Okay, so like doing something like a can, it's a great way to gain confidence. So down, 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 down to the side. And I was telling you guys when we were drawing fire yesterday, it's sort of like, <laughs> you. What's nice about drawing certain objects like fires or can't, you feel like you don't mess it up, right? It's not a human face, right? You can't, you can't get it wrong. It's a can, it's a can, it's great practice. Okay, I'm bringing down the value, adding in hatching. Hatching, hatching, hatching. And I'm going ahead and I'm emphasizing the edges of the can right there. curving with my hatching, adding some lines going up. And I'm showing how this can is bending up. So I'm showing the different surfaces, right? So the different directions, This the edge of this lip goes up here, right? And I may not see lines there. You know, they may not visibly be there, but I'm, I want the viewer to understand that they're there. Okay, bringing down the value. What am I doing? I'm showing the edge of the table right now. So coming in with that blue gray and really showing the edge of the table, defining that hard boundary. So you don't wanna bring your dark values in until the end. Yes? So really, really, and I'm like eyeballing it. I'm like, okay. The, the edge of the table goes here and then it goes all the way through, right? I'm not going through because I want this to come out in space. Now, the bright values on this really come forward and you hardly notice the hatching. Let me know if you guys don't like my hatching. I would be curious if you think it's overworked. I kind of feel like you have to take risks and really show what the can's been through. I'm showing that that can has been loved. It's been drunk. It brought me like water. It gave me life. 
And I think V, V means life. Okay, and then I'm adding in texture into the table with some hatching, telling the story of the table. And really defining, okay, just adding those lines at the side helps the viewer to know this is a hard boundary, this is the end of the cam. And my students know I like Van Gogh. I really like Van Gogh and you could see a lot of his kind of like expressive strokes in my drawings. And I would encourage them to have expressive strokes because you're, you're trying to make things look really smooth. You're too scared of it looking nice. Okay, shading things out. Shading the outlines. Okay, I'm softening things with that light purple. So it might be the 77. Now all of a sudden the 77 doesn't seem so powerful because I brought in those dark values. But I'm kind of unifying everything together. So I'm taking the 77 and I'm painting on the top. Kind of unifying everything, bringing it down. Okay, coming back in with the pen. Okay, really now, notice how dark those shadows are on the front. So I can use the pen to bring down the dark value. So I'm layering pen on top of marker. And if you guys want, you could like add watercolor in. You know, leave your drawing to sit. And then try, experiment with adding watercolor on the top experimenting with adding color pencil on the top. It's all there for you. Okay, look at that dark shadow I'm putting in. And you could see in the photo that dark shadow is there, which is so interesting. Putting in that blue gray. Bringing in that dark shadow. That's awesome. I don't know if the shadow is that dark. I'm looking at the photograph. But again, you could take creative liberty. There's something powerful when you have contrast like that. Now, let's say you're drawing a different can. You may want to pick a different kind of color for the shadow based on what you're seeing, based on your environment. Okay, those curvy lines at the side are critical. They are so important because it's showing the viewer that the can is bending, right? Now, I'm looking at the light and I do see a shadow at the side there, but I do think I could have left a little more white. I could see how someone might call this a little overworked, but that's okay, we're learning. It's better to do something than nothing. I'm bringing in some brown into the can, why? Because. Like some of that brown light is kind of like reflecting up to the can. So again, ask yourself, is my space well lit? And you could see how bright the light is, right? Look how bright the light is. That light's just really coming in from the window. All right. We're getting near the end. Adding in more hatching, adding in the pen. So today I'm going to really like dare my student. I'm going to like... Use some pen, guys. Use some pen in your art. Take some time over the weekend to experiment. If I see that you are experimenting, right, and you're taking risks, that's a good thing, right? So take risks, experience. Don't doubt yourself. Post whatever you got. And yeah, I'm just really bringing it down, but I'm not adding too much line on the table, because the table is meant as a backdrop for the can. I'm Again, I'm making the pulp can beautiful. And I'm going back. I'm thinking about my work. I'm saying, good job, artwork. And yeah, I think that's it. We are at the end of this video, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I really hope you have fun and you find beauty in the simple objects around you. And I would love to see whatever you make, right? So you could do this with any can, anything that's a sphere. But notice how it's a light value that might help you. Like if you pick a can that's at a lighter 
lighter colors, so you could bend it. Okay, bye everyone. Thanks for joining me.